show me how you do it. Let's, let's, let's see have a some fun. in action well, here, John. <laughs> let's have some fun. Okay. Man, how nice is that? Those little motors on the front oh, it's end, great. huh? It really is. Well, this is it. Like it's I said, so quiet. Like I said before, when you do uh, tournament fishing, you need to have something set up like this. Uh, it's not a necessity. I started out my tournament fishing in an aluminum boat. And I worked my way up to a uh, small fiberglass bass boat. And the more I fished the tournaments, especially on larger bodies of water, I realized I need a bigger, bigger boat. And that's just what I've done. I just progressed on up here. And I'm blessed to have a supportive wife. Yeah. And she enjoys fishing. My, my children enjoy fishing. As a matter of fact, the last tournament we fished, I fished with my son and we won it up there on Poker Moonshine. Good for you. So it, it's a blast just to see him out there and the smile on his face. It, it, it's unbelievable. Yeah, that's a little fish find, a little graph. And what it's telling me is the water depth and the water temperature right now it's 74.5 degrees. Perfect. And that's six feet? Yeah, 6.9 feet. It's, act it's actually a little deeper because the transducer's on the bottom of the trolling motor. So there's about a uh, foot and a half Are difference those on fish it. Between the no, what you have shown here is basically uh, water clutter. These little marks here. A fish will show up as an arc. Oh, It'll be I like a, a half moon. Yep. So you see a half moon shape on there, you'll see a fish. How fair is that though? Is it fair? It's I mean it's to have fair. to be able to see where they are. I mean, not only can you get to them with such a nice boat, but <laughs> what right? you what you're doing is it's it's not going to tell me what type of fish is there. It's actually going to tell me the contours of the bottom, the way the structure is on down the bottom, the water temperature. Like I said before, you, there's a little formula you want to put together, and it's location and presentation. When you're fishing for bass, especially cover structure, you want to find it. Look at this log right here, okay? Uh, yeah, I that know. log right there is structure. It doesn't offer much for cover, but a fish will relate to it. And why will they hang out around that log? They're 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 predators. They're, they're looking for little fish. Right, they're predators. They want something that they could ambush their prey with. But like with the uh, fish finders, I can see what's on the bottom. If you got a, a bottom like this, as you see here, we've got a little bit of grass down here. Mm -hmm. And if we find something that will really pop up, like here, there's a little rock. And we've got right here, this little item right here is a small stump. It's, it's a, uh, like I said, it's, it's a passion. You yes. have to enjoy what you do. Yeah, and you there, do. there are people out there that have really expensive cars and they have really expensive uh, sure. RVs. And for me, it, it's, it's my fishing. And like I said, I'm blessed to have a support family. And it's what all. What do you do in the wintertime? In the wintertime, I pull my hair out. Because <laughs> you really like to bass. You yes. don't ice fish. I do not ice fish, no. no. I, I love bass fishing. Yeah. It's, it's, the, it's a passion for me. Yeah. And during the wintertime, it's just a slow season. You know, if, when I'm lucky, I get to travel down south, go down to Virginia, and do some fishing down there. I mean, how can you not love this? Just look around you. It's beautiful. I know it is. It is. Yeah. It's really beautiful just to be out here. What do we have here? What kind of a lure is that? Well, what I'm using right now is a quarter ounce spinnerbait. These are spinnerbaits that I've made. You make them? Yes. And it's gold blades. No. Secret paper, can't show you. No. <laughs> and basically what I'm doing is we got a little bit of wind on the water. And I'm just feeling out the area, just trying to see for active fish. And if I can find those active fish, then I'll focus in on what the little slower bait. Is that slower considered bait. top water though? This, no, this isn't no. considered top water. It's mm -hmm. more or less a, um, well, it's a multi-purpose bait. I can fish it as a top water just by bringing it up on the surface like that. Yeah. Little, little splashes. Right. Just like that, or I can let it sink to the bottom and work it up slowly and it'll flutter. You can see it fluttering yeah. up and down. That's a lot of, a that's a lot of action, I think. Now what we're going to is there's a little flat here, you can see the grass. And I'm going to work us around the corner of mm -hmm. the grass spots and see if we can pick something up. With this overcast sky, they're not going to be related too much to cover, but they are going to want the structure. As it's been the past few uh, days, we had really high bright sun and the fish will take shelter under any shady spots they can find. 
or if they can't find shady spots, they'll go for deeper water. Do you ever know? There was a hit right there. There, I saw him. Monster bass, John. I see that. So you got, now what is this, your third pole? Yes. Oh, I have <laughs> plenty more to go through. <laughs> but how, you only brought three today. Nope, they're all inside the uh, box down there. You just have them all rigged up with I just have them all different... rigged up with what I want to use. One's rigged up with the top water like this one right here. Yeah. Another one's rigged up with the spinner bait. Can I see that Yeah. One? This right here is a yep. Zara Spook. Ooh. That's a top water, huh? Yes. Look at the size of it. I wouldn't think that a oh, bass... Yes. Even a small fish would go after that? Oh, you'll, you'll be surprised. They are very aggressive. You know, sometimes it makes you think that their eyes are bigger than their stomach. Yeah. You, you, it's more action. You're going to see explosive splashes. And a lot of people don't understand, on a topwater bite, when they see that splash, they think the fish is taking it. And believe it or not, there are actually three types of splash that the fish are doing to that. And what's happened is people, the biggest mistake people make on top water is they'll see the splash and react to it. They'll pull the, pull the uh, rod right back and they'll miss the fish. A lot of times what they're doing is they'll do a tail slap. The fish will actually come up and slap the bait with its tail and try to stun it or kill it to keep it from moving. Is that how it works? Is that yes. why? That's, that's, that's why I miss my fish when I catch them. That's one of the biggest reasons right there. So what should someone do? Just wait. Let the lure disappear. It, it's hard. It's hard to do it. You sit back, wait, let the lure disappear. When the lure's gone, you feel it. Then you set the hook. The 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 big difference is a smallmouth bass is more of a chase down. Uh, predator. It'll chase down a prey. It'll chase down a moving bait. A largemouth I like to consider as a uh, more lethargic, uh, ambush style predator. It'll sit and wait for the bait to come to it, or if it's right near it, it'll take it. But very rarely will a largemouth ever chase down a bait. You got to put it in front yeah, of you, him. You usually have to put it in front of them. That's where comes the uh, presentation of, you know, putting it right in front of their nose, pitching it, flipping it. You'll see a lot of guys down south, they'll come up to an area like this and they'll just take it and flip that jig or flip that tube or worm right into the cover and keep hitting it over and over. And then on that fourth or fifth time, you'll end up catching the fish. Yep, we're gonna go back to the spinner bait. So I always wonder, you know, these grassy areas. They look like snag places just where you're going to get a snag. They, they can be. Right? Yeah, they can be, but you, want to, you don't want to ignore them. You know, what I try to focus on is areas that are different. Like you have one spot right there with just two grass all by itself. Yeah. Now, how do you handle them so you don't hurt them? Well, normally, oh, you, so normally, normally you ground by the lip. Right. And but he was uh, on there light. He, he was just on there barely. Gotcha. May have to put a stinger hook on it. They were hitting it very short. Yeah. What does that mean? They're hitting it very short. What happens is the fish will come up and just hit the back sides of the skirts, uh, yeah. or they may even just hit the blades. When a fish attacks uh, its prey, it goes for the head 99% of the time. So when they hit a spinnerbait, they're always aiming for the head part of it. And that's when they hit the head, you can always hook them. But when they're hitting it short, they're a little wary. They'll hit the back side, they're just basically reacting to it. So you put a stinger hook on the back, which is an extension hook, and it comes down to about here and you'll end up hooking more fish. There you go. If you catch one f fish, will there be others nearby? Yes, yes. 